Okay, I finally figured out a solution that's gonna work for pretty much everybody, so let's dive into it. This is my Bamboo uh, Lab P1S. Um, it looks very similar to the Elegoo uh, Centauri Carbon. The one thing people are talking about though is the, the PTFE tube on top runs um, kind of on top and behind this uh, cable guide. So in order to do that on the uh, Centauri Carbon, it's a little bit different problem. Um, it's hard to see here. Um, I got to take the top off to show you, but the actual tube doesn't come in at the same angle as this. The other one on the uh, Centauri does. This one actually comes in on top and it stays on top the whole way. And there's only one little, I guess, one little tie that holds it on. So this doesn't have any issue. Um, we still use a little uh, uh, guide here at the end just to keep it from kinking. But um, anyway, this one never has an issue with you know feeding material or breaking carbon fiber or anything because it's not a it's not a crazy strong curve here like the other one so what are we going to do we're going to fix this on the elegoo and come up with a solution let's try okay so here is the centauri carbons um as you can probably see from my last video i made the little deal that goes in here the adapter uh ptfe thing i have the cable running about here but you know, as some people have said, okay, so it, it might get caught up in here and rub on the, you know, the, the what do you call it, the, the cable guide relief area in the printer. So it scratches on here. Not really a big deal, but if you want to eliminate that, what are the options? I mean, there's nowhere to put it anywhere else. So here's what I found. It's going to be the solution. Fix the camera. Hold on. Okay, so let's say... We take the tube out completely um, and then you want to jam it into the back corner there's no issue no issue at the front no issue at this side or wherever so how are we going to do that so here's the idea instead of just leaving it all dangling around with no top on let's take the riser i already made and we're going to put a relief in it here like a slot almost where this tube can now feed through a slot and and as it needs to move it'll move you know left and right in the slot but what seems to be the problem I don't know let's figure it out all right so here's one of the risers that I made for one of the machines earlier this was a one-piece print I did on the uh, what did I print this on the uh, any cubic uh, Cobra 2 max so it's a one-piece print it's all good um, anyway, so what if we do that? What if I take this and I, I don't know, let's put a relief in this area, right? So if I was to, let me see, without reprinting this whole thing for the, for the sake of a, uh, you know, working concept, we'll drill a hole there, we'll drill a hole there and we'll slot it. And then your tube could run through here and kind of, you know, freely move back and forth as the print head moves. So that would be the first idea. And then when I go ahead and remodel this, we'll we'll add some cuts so we can print this in four pieces if you need to. But so yeah, essentially you could run the tube up here through the hole. You're not gonna lose a lot of heat coming out of here either. I mean, you guys are worried about printing carbon fiber or something, but like there's more leaks in the machine in other places. So I think this would be a pretty viable solution. Proof of concept, let's try it. Let's grab a drill, this is all I don't expect you guys to do this. This is just a, uh, a test. I'm going to print a new one, obviously. So let's just uh, drill a little hole here. We'll drill a little hole here. Clean this up later. This was a test. Anyway, so let's see. Oh, my tool is stuck. Hold on. Don't try this at home. I am a professional. All 
All right, whatever, proof of concept. We cut a couple of holes. I'm gonna put the tube through there and see if it moves freely. I'll just hit this with my uh, deburring tool and, and try it. Anyway, the idea is, will the tube run through there and not cause issues? So let's take it over here and see. Let's say the riser sits on here. Everybody's happy. Grab your tube, pull it out of that cable chain, of course. Um, let's stick it through here instead. What does that do for us? I don't know. Let's stick it back in and see. All right, whatever, take this off for now. We don't need it. Put a better one on there. All right, so let's say that's all pretty and this works. If we move this back to the corner, where's it gonna go? Probably somewhere in that area. To the front. Over, over, over. And technically, if this wasn't all rough and crappy, it actually would probably slide in there pretty good. But even that bend right there is no worse than the one I have on the bamboo. So, I mean, I think that'll work, right? It's just catching on all the, all the burrs right now. But let's make one. Why not? All right, so here we are. I'm in Shaper. This is uh, the riser I made um, a little while ago here. So here's the deal. Let's just take this. I drew a little um, I drew a rectangle with two circles, right? No big deal. We will. Uh, let me see here. I just moved it off center. I'm going to poke a hole through here. So the center of the the part is here. So if we're going to slice this later in our slicer, we can still slice in the middle and make this out of four parts. Uh, anyway, select all the faces, or I guess you could select all the edges, but whatever. It's just as easy. And then we will add a... I'm just going to make it nice and round. Let's see. It's just so it's smooth, right? Then that thing can... I don't want to go too far here, but let me... Yeah, that looks good. Anyway, so if we do that, we have a nice smooth... Actually, it may be too low, right? No, I can't go any higher, actually, because of the bevel here. Anyway, so let's try that. So let's save this. and Or I can. I guess I could probably cut this up in here. Or I usually just print them in one piece, but if you don't have a big enough printer, then you have to slice it in fours and add connectors or just glue this thing together when it's done. But... Um, for now, I'll just save this. I can probably slice it up in the in the slicer. But um, if you want to do dovetails or something, I think I would do it in here, maybe. So maybe I'll do that before I actually post this um, as a download. But the idea is the tube will run in here. It'll move back and forth as needed, and it won't get scratched up because of the nice, you know, bevel on the edges. So anyway, we'll, we'll print one of these and... Uh, give it a try, and I think that might be the answer we're all looking for. Oh, I guess also while I'm in here, I had a couple guys um, uh, tell me this little hole wasn't big enough for their big, fat, stupid light cable or something. So um, I'm just going to take the circle I already made, and I am not going to mess around with it too much. Where's the scale? Come on. I just want to scale it non-uniform. I will stretch it up a bit. Okay, there. Now everybody's happy. The hole for the LED light wire is bigger if you're going to run your own lights. Now we have a slot in the back. We have a thing for the lights. We have whatever. There's a cool little infinity freaking eight thing here. And that should be a riser that will work for everybody and fix any tube issues. All right. Cool. Let's do it. All right. So I saved one. I did not cut it up yet. So I'm in any cubic slicer right now i'm just going to pop this one in here and make it all one piece so yeah there it is let's see we got everything we got the slot we got the hole a bit bigger on the side everyone should be happy i'm printing this right now in what am i printing this in my own settings here actually too so hold on uh PLA plus, it's like a PLA high speed. Actually, you know what? It's matte. I'll just do generic. PLA matte, that's the one I made before. And I'm gonna do probably four walls on this. I don't need a lot of infill. We can leave it at 
gyroid, I guess, or we can do adaptive. I don't even think I need 5%. This thing could be hollow. Let's just see what it looks like. So if I do PLA any cubic five hours for the full thing, um, this is not there to do much other than hold up the, that bridge might be a little bit long, but let's see if we go quality and where's my bridges here. Let's turn on thick bridges for a second. Wall generator should be classic. I don't want to use. Okay, slice it again. And we're looking at just under six hours. Let's see. That's to do the whole thing. So if you slice this up in pieces, you can do it on multiple printers or take your time or add supports here. I don't know. We could probably add a support right here if we need to. All right, screw it. Tree, manual. Go to prepare, click on this. Let's paint our supports where we need them, which would be only in this area. Highlight overhangs. Um, this bevel is fine. Uh, let's make this brush a little bit bigger. Where is it? There it is. So let's just put in supports in this area and hit done, hit escape for this. Slice it. Okay, so now we have supports in this area only. Saved ourselves maybe 15 minutes. I am doing a 0 0.20 layer height with PLA matte. And I have four, let me see. Yeah, four wall loops. I'm only doing 5% adaptive cubic infill, which is probably sufficient. I am not holding up the Eiffel Tower here, just a piece of glass. Plus, the wall loops are actually stronger than the infill, so... All right, cool. Okay, for now, I'm just going to print this on the Anycubic... Uh, what is this thing? Cobra 2 Max. So all I do on these things is um, let it heat up to whatever... There was some red in there before. I just snip it here, because I actually made all this crap that runs up to my filament. The dryer. Anyway, so the black is ready to go, but it's just kind of sitting here. So once it's hot, let's extrude this about that much. Stick this in the new hole here. Where is it? Anyway, keep the material in. Let's pull in as I extrude the red out. Anyway, load up this beast. Oh, also, I made a bunch of these. Really cool. Check them out. I got Spider-Man, Doom. Uh, this one I found actually on Printables. Someone made a skull. And I did an Iron Man. did a Batman. Um, I will upload those at some point, too. I just haven't got around to it. They're fan covers. Okay, it's printing now. It just did the first layer here. So, I will check back soon because it's boring as hell to watch a six hour print. I'll be back in a minute. Yep, still going. Okay, here it is in all its glory. Anyway, there's that slit and it's beveled. Um, it turned out pretty good actually, considering this was on the, uh, the any cubics, uh, what do you call that thing? The Cobra. Um, anyway, so let's put this on and, and make this happen. With the new riser installed, you're going to put the tube through here, same as we did before. And now it can slide freely. And this is a nice smooth bevel, not that crusty crap I did before. So it shouldn't chew up the tube or anything. Um, but again, these chew tubes are, um, you know, inexpensive. Regardless, I would rather have this happening where it'll just slide around as you print. And instead of being jammed in this thing and bending like it bends really really bad over here and then it bends really bad over here you'll know as soon as you go to feed uh, material through how much smoother it is to feed through anyway still use this part that we made on the last video which is my tube um, bender like adapter deal and it'll still rotate around but the good thing is this will keep it from going straight up and into the glass when you put the glass on top so um, I would say still use this. Um, 
and everything else should be good to go. So there you go. That's the uh, ultimate fix as far as I'm concerned for this issue with this tube and this chain thing running in here and all that other crap. So happy printing and let's make another one. All right, cool again. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to print one for this guy and get printing.